Hello and welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. I'm Uncle Warren. I want to remind everybody that Cartoonist Kayfabe is a daily comic book series on YouTube. We have done almost 1,500 videos and you can search for your favorite title on the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube homepage. If we haven't run your favorite uh, book yet, let us know what you're looking for. Also, we have a Patreon. At the three different levels, you will get access to our videos early before we actually post them here. And at the King K Faber level, you will get to sit in on the recording session. So you will get the videos first before anybody else. And if we're looking at something rare or hard to find, you'll be the first one in line tracking that down before those prices get outrageous or before they completely disappear. And uh, we call that the kayfabe effect. So check out the King Kayfaber level of cartoonist kayfabe to avoid the kayfabe effect. All right. We are looking at something uh, that I have wanted to look at for a while on this channel. I love these 80s weird superhero comics and Flaming Carrot comics. One of the weirder of these, uh, these types of comics. Uh, the brainchild of Bob Burden, who has, I believe, started these in late 79 as like yes. a one-pager. Um, oh, I forget the name of the magazine they were in. But eventually it becomes like the Atlanta Dragon Con fantasy, you know, booklet things. So Flaming Carrot starts out almost like Ben Unlin's Tick. Yeah. Where it's yes. like, you know, a one pager or a short thing and then blossoms into its own series. And uh, we have a pretty good selection of stuff that Warren brought. We're going to kind of showcase the pretty much the entire run of Flaming Carrot, a couple of issues at a time to sample those. And uh, we can start with Flaming Carrot comics collected. We neither of us have the uh, very first issues of Flaming Carrot, but this will give us a an idea of what his artwork is like in the very beginning. And I've become interested in these '80s alternative superheroes because they're just plain weird. Many of them. And Flaming Carrot, it's surreal. It's almost yes. like Dada. You know, like he's doing things that I don't see in any other superhero comics, including nope. the weird alternative indie comics. And I think that makes it kind of a, a kind of an iconic character in a lot of ways. Well, and and the thing about Flaming Carrot was, if you look at Flaming Carrot, you look at the Tick, like you just said, right? Uh, Dom Simpson's Megaton Man, uh, um, and there were others. The bottom line was, is they were supposed to be funny. Yes. Okay. And so this was not, you know, this this was not um, Dark Side or you know anybody like that. Thanos. This was trying to bring some humor into it. And of all of the ones that did that, there was no question that Flaming Carrot was the single most absurd. Now, <laughs> interestingly enough, out of all of those, The Tick was made into a TV show, but the offshoot of The Flaming Carrot, The Mystery Men, was made into a movie. And it didn't do well at the box office, but those of us who sat in the movie theater at the time, I thought it was fucking brilliant. Yeah, it's okay. one of the superhero movies I enjoy, and if anybody's unfamiliar with it, it's Ben Stiller, Janine Garofalo, it's a great William, William H. William H. Macy. Macy. Yeah, it's quite a shoveler. Quite a, okay. <laughs> he shovels, he has a gift. <laughs> now, and, and to give some people, so I, I want to quote this directly, okay? So the origin of the Flaming Carrot is, okay, having read 5,000 comics in a single sitting to win a bet, this poor man suffered brain damage and appeared directly thereafter as the Flaming Carrot. <laughs> it might be my favorite superhero origin. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The trajectory, man, uh, is is interesting. So, Cerebus, the first time I discovered Cerebus was in um, Spawn Comics. I read that issue, ten, 10 of Spawn, and I think in the back it there was an ad for, for Cerebus, and you realize that, that it's got a bigger life than just this thing. So then, like, that... That winter, I got every phone book uh, that uh, Dave Sim put out for Cerebus. And in between there, there's during Church and State, I believe, is a little interaction between Cerebus and the Flaming Carrot. And that's the first Flaming Carrot I ever saw. So, like, before any kind of fandom and really before discovering magazines or any anything that could clue you into context or the bigger, wider world of comics... Like you kind of just like fell into shit and right. and yeah. and fell fell into like discovering things in in these ways. And we should say that Dave Sim, first publisher of the uh, Flaming Carrot, and eventually he and his wife split, and she forms Renegade, and Flaming Carrot then goes to Renegade 
for publication. And I've been flipping through. These are the early reprints. I've been flipping through these, and I don't know if you notice at home or not, I see stuff like Windsor McKay influence yes. in the line art and some of the treatments. I come back to this page to show Panic, Fear, Terror. These are like Rory Hayes Absolutely. like straight yeah, absolutely. references. Sure. So you're getting like yeah. underground comics in addition to classic newspaper comics. And, and it's a pretty interesting, you know, just the character design itself pretty unique for... Even at this point, I'm always impressed when I open a 40-year-old book and I go, oh, yeah, it's, stuff still doesn't look like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know that this is the height of comic art. You know, I wouldn't <laughs> suggest that. But it is a comic that doesn't look like other comics. And I do right. give points for that. You oh, know, that's absolutely. a big thing in my yeah, world. No one, no one was doing anything remotely like this at the time. And what was also great was was all the supervillains he had. And, you know, this, he lived in, in a neighborhood in Iron City. And so Iron City was this gritty, blue-collar, um, you know, old steel town type place. And so everything that went on there was, in, was counter to what was going on in New York at the Baxter Building. Okay. Um, I love, like, the tagline, yes. Further Adventures of the Strangest Man Alive. Uh, yeah, on, um, the early ones in particular had those taglines, a different one on every issue. He uses that Golden Age panel border uh, with, with these old comics to, to give it that... that that old school vibe and this is a 1985 publication here kind of hit his schedule pretty good you know yeah, i think it was did. about bi-monthly for a long time and you know we we've said it before that monthly deadline or oh, bi-monthly look. deadline was very important i have i have all those on on the one where, where we did the tour of my house i showed off the flaming carrot uh, t-shirt collection, which is why I didn't bring any today. Graffiti designed it in business a long time, way longer than I realized. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah, very very interesting. Another feature that's in a lot of these issues, possibly all of them, is Bob Burden doing a text piece, which was something that I would always appreciate when I started finding like indie comics. Well, any comics I would appreciate hearing from the creator. Yeah. I was like a sponge for that, but you don't see that in like a Marvel DC book very often. But a lot of the indie books, you would see it and... You know, usually it's in an issue one, yeah. and it's talking about how they got there. Mm -hmm. But whenever it's somebody that's doing a longer series, you start to really get into some. You can find some stuff. You know, how how does this? Why do you work that way? What's your process? It was the only way to uh, get that kind of information. Certainly for like an indie guy who, you know, Gary Groth ain't, ain't chasing him down to to do the big interview. This video is brought to you by the books that Ed Piscor and I make. Coming out this November, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty from Image Comics joins Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Live to complete my Street Angel collection. Hulk Grand Design, available where better comic books are bought and sold but running out. So pick that one up if you haven't already. And my self-published comics, True Crime Funnies, 1986 Zine, and BW Zine will be available on JimRug.com October 26th. Hip Hop Family Tree, The Omnibus, will be out in October Pre-order that one if you haven't already. Put your name on a copy before it is gone. X-Men Grand Design by Ed Piscor will be collected. All three volumes in one trade paperback in time for the holiday season. That's another one to pre-order. The X-Men Grand Design trilogy paperback. And Red Room, Trigger Warnings, Anti-Social Network, and coming very soon, Crypto Killers. Pick these up wherever you buy comics. And now back to our video. The other credit that you'll see on most of these, if not all of them, is Roxanne Starr doing the lettering. And I think that's a really good piece because it kind of adds a certain consistency to this art that's that's all right and serviceable and works. But I don't know if it were kind of sloppy handwriting for your lettering, if that might bring down the yes. impression of what you're looking at as opposed to looking at it and going, yeah, there's a professional degree here. Right? Yeah, but it's still awkward as fuck like look at these balloons man she is credited with uh being one of the first digital letterers yeah and i don't know when that begins i don't it think this digital. is digital yet but maybe yeah, she is typesetting in some way yeah, look at that yeah yeah it's pretty ugly but like you i associate it with with his stuff now, right flaming carrot was one of the only books along with fabulous furry freak brothers and a couple of others <laughs> okay and you I, know what this is great you know please speak your point and let's stick to this uh, well uh, because Every now and well, I'd be My reading through an movie. issue, and all of a sudden I'd come to a panel, and I would just break out laughing. Right. Okay, there would be this just this absurd turn or something that was going on, and all you could do was laugh. Fearless Fosdick. So go back there real quick, Jimmy. And yes. th this is a story I was. I think we've crossed over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I was at Fantagraphics uh, once, and, and, and uh, Bob Burden came out. His name came up, and uh, they were joking like. 
at the offices at Fanta, received the phone call. And, and Bob Burton's a hustler. Hustler. We will see examples yeah. uh, on on future on other covers and stuff that we're going to look at, at here. But you know, mid '80s, probably probably uh, getting some juice and getting some popularity, and and you know, not not being shy to ask for things. So he calls up Fanta and goes like, "You know what we need to do, man? We need to do an anthology of left-handed cartoonists." <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, and it's going to be Jaime Hernandez, and it's going to be Robert Crumb, and it's going to be me, Bob Burden. <laughs> I say that because we have yes. our uh, Jaime characters right there, if uh, if you're not, not hip. Yeah, it's very fun. Very fun uh, seeing these characters cross over. <laughs> wonder if that's done with permission or not. Nah, man, just throw some props out. That's those good old days. Indie Comics, man. Team Comics back then, before they had a name for it. But you see he's also adding blacks at this point. And I yeah. think that's a big yes. yeah, yeah. one of the bigger progressions in his art, because it's pretty consistent. I have, like, one of his last published Flaming Carrots that we'll look at, and it's very similar to the original. You know, he doesn't deviate much style-wise, but he does get a little bit more aggressive in the spotting of blacks. Yeah, he kind of so, does yeah, what he here's does. Here's another one, Louis. For the fashionably eccentric. Yes. Yeah, they have a, a distinct look. And at this point, after the Renegade closes shop, he right. goes to Dark Horse, and they publish him for a long time. Yeah, They feel fanzine-ish, because he's using like weird markers or something for the cover. It, it feels so DIY, so hand-done. Yes. Which actually kind of attracted me to indie comics. Although, in the case of Flaming Carrot, I think it was a comic scene issue, again, that probably first drew it to my attention. Yeah. Because I don't know where else I would have heard a flaming carrot or seen it but once you see it it does pop it's definitely it's, weird yeah it's so absurd that you can't yes. you can't ignore it i look at this cover and i think like that could have been a deadline you know like if that had been in deadline magazine it would have made perfect sense to me right, right? you know it's almost you have a collage background a weird character and then like some kirby art exhibit or yeah, something and, and the uh you know brendan mccarthy brand of color yes Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, want to, I want to read the top of this to everybody, okay? <laughs> it says, Celebrating 10 years of barnstorming insanity, undaunted euphoria, and general all-around mucking about the field. Okay, the furthest, the further adventures of the strangest man alive. If you read the text pieces, too, because, like, Denny Lubert, the publisher for the first, I don't know how many issues, 10 issues or so, would have, like, an intro piece on each issue, paints a picture of Bob Burden as just the wild and crazy guy of comics uh, or of Atlanta or something. Big but strip club dude. All over the place in terms of how he's described. This is kind of neat. Almost popping that old uh, DC joint. Yeah, 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 absolutely. With all the different, yeah, the big-headed Superman and all and that shit. It's good. Right. makes perfect sense. You know, like, this is a guy who's trying to sell comics with the cover. This is right. the way he used to sell books, everybody, and, and you know, really trying it. And, and now the trifecta. This is where you get to the uh, indie self-publishing royalty, right? Whenever the turtles uh, grace you with their presence. And it's funny. I think it's in this... This is a three-parter. And uh, very, very noteworthy because... Part three, you know, you might lag in sales a little bit. Get your your buddy McFarlane to do the cover. <laughs> but what's so the what's Teenage the date on Mutant these? Ninja Turtles? What's that? What's the date on these? Uh, this is probably early nineties. I'm guessing it's like ninety four, maybe. Yeah, I couldn't find any indicia. Oh, you've already looked. At, setting me up to look dumb here. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't see a date anywhere, unfortunately. But I'm guessing it's probably around. Let me see if it's in this one. 90, 92, 93, something in that vicinity. Well, look. That doesn't help me. <laughs> Here's a 1991 on, on the Part 2 issue. And, uh, Ed, you had mentioned Turtles getting the top billing on the Flaming Carrot comics because, hey, we're trying to sell stuff. Although, at that time period, Turtles comics not selling The Blooms great. Off the Rose, like, yeah. uh, you, you're not getting that bump that you, you got uh, before. In fact, like, look, they even have the multicolor stuff, so that lets you know that it's later, later period Turtles. And I do think it's noteworthy to say Todd McFarlane doing the Turtles. You know, he does a piece in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 50, which would have been maybe a little bit after this, but not a lot of McFarlane Turtles art out there. Here's another piece. Yeah, like, looking at the way everything's set up, like, this doesn't look far from that. I think Bob Burden drew it in McFarlane Inc. He very well might have, and I do wonder, like, are these, are these guys passing each other, you know, in, in the 80s? when McFarlane is hustling and everybody's working yeah. comic sh shows and things like that. I wonder if there's some history there. Um, but in the second part, he tells a story in his like 
little extra note from the author about how this was supposed to be a two-parter and uh he he turned it into three parts got kevin eastman to sign off on it but again like to your point of being a hustler you've got the teenage mutant ninja turtles hold on let's to do another little, issue hold on to a little bit and he does that and then mirage publishes a four issue run of flaming carrot teenage mutant ninja turtle comics bob burden does not draw them i don't know if he writes them or not it's hard for me to imagine someone else writing the Flaming Carrot because of the eccentricities of the and character. I love this. Flaming Carrot, you can't buy a better comic without a prescription. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So ends up running, I think, 30, 31 issues maybe. Yeah, something uh, like that. Through yeah. the end of the Dark Horse run. They're numbered uh, consecutively whenever they switch publishers. They don't necessarily get a new issue or a new issue one until we show up at Image Comics. And he does have a new issue one up here, but if you check the indicia in the back, they stick with issue number 33 in the mm. regular series. And this is 2004 Image Comics, which is, let's look again. Who's the publisher at that point? Ah, see, this is an imprint of Image. Oh, Eric Larson had taken over at that point. Todd McFarlane, president of Image, again, to go like full circle of like he's drawing or inking a cover for Bob Burden years before this. But you can see stylistically, part of the reason I wanted to bring this is it's still Bob Burden, you know, from a style yes, standpoint, yeah. like he's doing these horizontal lines, which we saw in the first appearances of Flaming Carrot. Not a lot of change there. Um, you do see the the hard digital lettering very apparent at this point using a font that, that we often criticize. But otherwise, like, Bob Burden's pretty consistent over yeah. the course of 25 years of doing these comics. And and like I said, th these, almost every issue, I would break out laughing. There'd, yes. be one, there'd be one or two panels and be like, oh my God, where did that come from? <laughs> and the surreal stuff is something that I think separates Flame and Carrot from even some of the humor books. It's an, it's an element that a few of these comics do have, but it's not common. And in his case, it really, he, he leans into the surreal and the data of just like stream of consciousness. You know, there's a lot right. of techniques that he uses that very few comics use. Well, and speaking of, of the humor stuff, you know, the undergrounds, they had, you know, Crumb was funny and Gilbert Shelton was funny, Schreier and Sheridan were, were, were funny. And that that view of comic books being funny existed into the 80s and 90s with Bob Burden and Megaton Man and everybody like that. Um, and that's gone. I don't know why people aren't doing funny books anymore. It, it, it is a shame. You know, I don't know if that's related to the political climate of the current uh, landscape where humor just is not, uh, we don't see it, I don't see it as much, at least not in these genre comics. Right. And it may be the genre fans, they take their genre seriously, yes, they, so they do. maybe yeah. you don't want to poke it too much. Now, now Greed was, a, was basically a zine. There's all kinds of stuff on the inside, and they would do um, really nice in-depth articles or interviews with different comics. And this one I just ha you know I've got left over from when I got it you know 1989 look at look at the bottom billing that's amazing S.R. Bissett Daniel Johnston I kind of yeah. want to see the Jan Daniel Johnston the piece uh. well maybe we'll flip to that I, I flagged the uh, the flaming carrot piece I thought we might see a really interesting table of contents but maybe we'll flip through and see what the Daniel Johnston Th stuff this is, is one of those on his music this is one of those zines man that, that like uh, man I used to go to Ides and like if if uh there were no comics for me. I would go to that top section and just buy weird magazines yes, like this. Yeah. Of you know, all shapes and sizes. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I love this stuff because the zines back then were actually doing a lot of comic stuff. Yeah. Interviews with people or specialty pieces or what, whatever it may be. be uh, S.R. Bissett. That's interesting. Doing almost like editorial. That might be from WAP, dude. Editorial cartoon. Depending on what it is. I think there's a few of his. I, I did a flip through here earlier. I think there's a few of his articles. Is this Bernie Moreau? No. It's his Bob, Bob Burnett. Burnett. Okay. And you would get this, just kind of interesting people who just, uh, you know, got some art supplies and, yeah, and sure. made a comic. I mentioned um, Deadline at the beginning, and it's it's interesting to see these music magazines that would be like, yeah, put a couple of comics pages yeah. in there. Well, there's a whole history of that stuff yeah. that, that needs to get done. So there's your Daniel Johnson piece, probably uh, focusing on both his songwriting, but got to include some of his artwork if you yeah. want to do Daniel Johnson. Yeah, it looks and like he has his shit together in that photo. We have a we have a video, you guys, of on, on a book collection of Daniel Johnson's art. So if you're a fan of him, um, that stuff is hard to find. Go check out the video because yeah, it's, uh, sure. it's nice. It's a color book. You really get to see a lot of his artwork there. 
So super cool, Warren. Uh, like I said, I've been wanting to look at this because I do think like I'm ready to do the '80s alternative comics uh, superhero playlist. I have to work on a better title for it. Yeah. But uh, you know, like I've been going through this in my head of like some of the bigger titles that, that we haven't covered yet, and Flaming Carrot's one of those. You know, yeah, it's, totally. it's hard to classify it. Oh yes, very hard to classify it. And and you know, if you're not used to this kind of humor, it, a lot of it's going to go past you anyway. Now I don't know what it says about me that I get it. <laughs> but it's it's fabulous stuff, and then then this is one of those things I you know I saw it at the time and picked it up. I've got a couple other issues agreed with some good comic stuff in it, and the zines back then that they, they, that's a whole other episode. There was some great stuff that went went yeah, in there. Yeah, no doubt about it. As Ed said, like we're very lucky with Ides the way it's set up. Like we do get to see some of that stuff that's still available because they have a uh, quite a back catalog of yeah. it uh, on display for people. Did we show off that like uh, Gumby joint or are we get oh. Oh, yeah, one more piece of uh, Bob Byrne to contextualize it. Working for Kamiko and with Art Adams doing these Gumby. Did a couple of these specials, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I think we did a video on the Christmas special uh, that they did Don't together. Don't go too far, because we have no, to No, 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 we'll cover it in depth. One, yeah. But it's great to see Bob Byrne teaming up with Arthur Adams. Like, who thinks of Art Adams doing this kind of work? And it's fantastic. So the, the, uh, this is another one of those books that just cracked of a me future, up. A future it video just cracked me up. I, I love this one so much. So super good. Good to go, guys. I am. Okay, favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. About fifteen hundred videos up there right now. We might have covered your favorites. Uh, give the channel a search. Hit the magnifying glass on the front page. Pop in your favorite titles. Uh, check out uh, the videos that we do about your faves. And if we didn't cover yours yet. Let us know uh, in the comments below, and we will push those books higher up on our to-read piles. The, vi the uh, King Kayfabers on our Pat Patreon get to see all these videos before anybody else, and it mitigates the Kayfabe effect. They're also hanging out with us in a live stream chat room right now, watching us record all of these videos. About three dozen people in there right at this moment. And uh, they get a leg up on everything that we're, we're chatting about. So they're running off to Amazon. They're running off to eBay <laughs> and grabbing all the comics that we talk about. So uh, subscription pays for itself if you hit up the Patreon. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. This is our bibliography uh, so far. But we always have new stuff coming out. And this holiday season is going to see no less than three cartoonist kayfabe projects. Uh, Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is coming to you in October. 10th anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree, 50th anniversary of The Culture, 500 plus page book with 150 pages of material in there that is not in the very first uh, four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree, so you have to scoop this up for the kind of ultimate statement. It's the best book that I've uh, ever made, and I really hope you add it to, to your bookshelves. Not the only holiday effort coming out. Uh, the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback is coming to you in November, and it is collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, so make sure you get your hands on that. Some of those volumes are out of print. Red Room is the current focus, and there are two trade paperbacks of Red Room that are out on the shelves. This is for your more goth uh, Christmas uh, <laughs> Christmas uh, buyer. And uh, the third in the trilogy of Red Room is coming out in January. Red Room Crypto Killer is going to have the same kind of red cover motif. You're not going to be able to miss it on the racks, but please uh, pre-order it now so we know how many of those to print. Jimmy, tell the people what you got going on. It is time to get to your local comic book store and pre-order Street Angel Princess of Poverty. This book will be out in November from Image Comics, and it collects all of the Street Angel comics, the homeless ninja on a skateboard that are not featured in Deadliest Girl Alive. It's designed to be part of a set with Deadliest Girl Alive, so pick that one up if you haven't already, and let your comic shop know that you want a copy of Street Angel Princess of Poverty while you can. Hulk Grand Design Treasury Edition has sold out at the distributor level. That means there are still copies sitting on shelves at the uh, better comic book shops out there, but I want to reward those comic shop owners. So if you haven't picked up Hulk Grand Design yet and your shop has a copy, pick it up. I want to see these things find a good home for the holiday season this year. And Marvel doesn't keep stuff in print, so... It may be a while before you can get another copy of this book, especially at cover price. So reward those comic shops and add that to your collection while you can. I have been self-publishing lately, including the BW zine, a collection of black and white explosion materials, the 1986 zine celebrating the greatest year in comics history, and True Crime Funnies, my anthology of nonfiction short stories, including two wrestling stories. These will be for sale on jimrug.com October 26th. 
basically a fall holiday sale for everybody. Put that on your calendar so you don't miss it because I don't have infinite number of these. Uh, chances are some of them will sell out uh, again. So October 26th is when you can pick these up on my website. If you can't wait till then, join patreon.com slash jimrug and you can download and read a lot of my out of print zines and mini comics. Support the books, keep the videos coming to you on a regular basis, but there's some other ways that you could support the a cartoonist kayfabe directly. Jimmy, let the people know. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, fanny packs, stickers, and lots more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video in the show notes. There you go. Jimmy, give them those final marching orders and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.